In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the factory running boards off a second gen 4Runner and also answer the question, can you fit 33s without a lift? So these running boards are bolted onto the truck by way of six bolts. There's two bolts there on the front, two in the middle, and then two in the back. On the end caps, there are these Phillips head screws that you're going to want to remove. And then optionally, there's a cotter pin that connects the end cap to the running board itself. You don't have to remove this. You'll notice I didn't pull it off of this one. It's on there still. But the reason why I bring this up is because the first time on the first end cap that I pulled off, I pulled really hard because I didn't know that end cap was there. And you can see that one broke off. So just be careful if you're wanting to sell these to someone, they'll probably want them in one piece. So once you get all the bolts loosened off of the truck, you're gonna notice that the running board's not gonna just fall off. And that's because there's two bolts. There's one right there. And there's another one up here on the front, right there. Now here's a look at the running board itself. The bolt that's on the frame sticks in through here and it holds it up. So if you're on the back side of the truck, you're gonna have to push this mount forward in order to get it off of the bolt. Or if you're on the front, you're gonna have to push towards the back of the truck so that the running board will come down that way. The back end cap is held on with two Phillips screws. And I use a quarter inch socket with a PH2 head to remove those. On the front, you've got some options. You can either use a Phillips head or a 10 millimeter. While I was at it, I also removed the fender lips because I'm not a huge fan of chrome. On the driver's side, it looks really good. However, on the passenger side, there's this gas tank hanging down pretty dang low. And over here, it's a little bit more obvious. You can see the transfer case hanging down in the middle. So it looks like you have two inches of lift because you have more space from the body to the ground, but you've got these things hanging down. In contrast, this is the bottom of my Xterra and you can see it's pretty dang flat. The lowest point here are the rock sliders. So that's really cool. And also here on the Ranger, there isn't a whole lot hanging down. It's kind of a bummer that Toyota designed it this way. Maybe if we get really, really serious with this truck, we'll do a fuel cell and move the gas tank higher, but this is okay for now. For tires on the 4Runner, we tried something a little bit different this time. We went with 33 by 10 and a half by 15 on 15 by 8 American Racing Outlaw 2s. These are actually the same exact wheels that I have on the Ranger. 
except the Ranger has them in silver. I was gonna order them in silver for the Forerunner, but they were out of stock. And my wife has always really liked black wheels, so we decided to give them a try. Personally, I prefer the silver over the black, but they both look pretty good. For comparison, the Ranger is running 15 by eight wheels on a 33 with 12 and a half inch tire. So it's quite a bit beefier, but the 33 by 10 and a half still looks pretty good. And the main reason why I went with the 10 and a half on the Forerunner was that A, we weren't ready to put too much money in the suspension just yet. And also this truck is running at three point slow. So I didn't want to have too bulky of a tire because this truck is pretty gutless already as it is. Once we do a motor swap and all the things, we'll probably go with a bigger tire, but this is good enough for now. So to answer the question, can you fit 33s on a stock 4Runner with no lift? The answer is yes. On the forums, it says that you should be using a factory wheel, but I didn't have any problems with this 15 by eight. I was a little bit worried about it, but so far we've been running around town for about 300 miles now, going over speed bumps, doing U-turns, no issues. But I am a little bit worried about the back of the truck because the rear coils are pretty saggy. The true test will be when we take it off road and I'll do a video of that soon. In the next two or three months, I'm going to be ordering the Old Man Emu kit, which has new springs for the back, the ball joint spacer on the front and shocks all around. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'll post links to all the tools and the parts I used in this video in the description. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments. If you're new here, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. When you're waiting for parts, but you can't let your wife drive around without a horn. So impact socket, button, horn. Beep.